Hello, Church of Our Savior. It is Wednesday, September 1st. We're all afraid of something. And let me confess to you today something that I am really afraid of. And that is heights. Being up high is just unnerving for me. Uh, observation decks on tall buildings terrify me. Even, even climbing a ladder gives me the willies. My idea of a horror movie is watching somebody walk on a high wire suspended over a river gorge or between two skyscrapers. It's just almost unbearable for me to look at because the balance has to be so perfect or the person will plummet to his or her death. I share that with you because in recent months, I've been feeling a little bit like that person walking on a high wire, trying to maintain this perfect balance between, on the one hand, keeping everybody safe during this COVID pandemic, making sure that we do all the right things so that not only our parish, but our community at large can stay safe and as disease-free as possible. But also, trying to balance that with the need to connect and helping us as a parish to come together and to connect in person as much as we safely and reasonably can so that people can feel the bonds of community that are so important in maintaining our common life. The balance is not an easy one to maintain, and sometimes it feels like I am just about to slip off and fall one way or the other. Several months ago, well, at the beginning of summer, uh, we wanted to have three services every Sunday. Two of them would be in person, at 8 o'clock at the Rock Chapel, 9 o'clock in the main church, and then we would have an 11 o'clock Zoom service. The idea was to try to cover as many bases as possible, give people a couple of in-person options, but also make sure that there was a Zoom option available so that those who could not or just don't feel comfortable coming to church in person could have a worship experience. And the idea was that we would do that throughout the summer. And then when the fall came, we would be ready to live stream a service. And so we could go to three in-person services and live stream one of them. But in June and July, we heard a lot of feedback from people, especially those who really missed the 1115 in-person service. They wanted it. They felt like they were really suffering without that. And so um, I made the decision that on August 1st, we would go back to three in-person services, including an 1115 service in the main church. Even though we were not ready yet to start live streaming, we, we were far along the way, but we were not there yet, so that we would, for a month, six weeks, not have an online option. Uh, the idea was to try to meet the needs of those 1115 people, um, realizing that some people who wanted the online service would have to go without for a few weeks, hopefully not very many weeks. Well, since August 1st, we have heard from the people who have been missing an online service. Um, I've been hearing anecdotally and through emails that that's really important for people and it's a real lack right now. And the reality is that we're not quite there in terms of our live streaming. Uh, we're getting closer, but not fully there yet. Some of you know that on August 22nd, we did actually record the 1115 service and posted it on YouTube. We didn't publicize that because it was not really a launching of a live stream service so much as it was a trial effort, uh, sort of seeing how it would go and getting some sense for, could we do this and how would it look? Uh, and it actually looked pretty good. We got to tweak some, and, and but we're feeling really good about the progress we've made. Uh, the live streaming group has worked really hard to get all the equipment in place and now working with the software and getting down to the, the nitty gritty of fine tuning it so that it is aesthetically the best it can be. The plan was to do that on August 29th as well. And we tried, but we encountered some real technical difficulties and were not able to, to post it on YouTube. Meanwhile, people who saw the August 22nd version really wanted us to be doing that and thought, well, maybe we'd begun doing that every week and we're, we're not there yet. Um, we wanna get there soon. My hope is that 
by the middle of September, we'll be able to be offering a live stream service every week, if at all possible. And that's what we're aiming for, but I can't promise that. Uh, just to assure you that I'm hearing from lots of people and I get that it's important to have an online option for worship available, that people are missing that, uh, just as people were missing the 1115 person in-person service on Sunday morning. So uh, we're, we're trying to balance these things and doing our best to get to a point when we'll be able to have three in-person services every Sunday with an 1115 service live stream for those who cannot come and join us in person. Meanwhile, um, we've also been hearing that some people in the main church are feeling uncomfortable with, with the way people are getting closer to each other. And so beginning this coming Sunday, we are going to be spacing pews. So we're only going to use every other pew. People will still be masked, of course, but we're trying to add that little bit of space just so that those who are feeling uncomfortable, feeling too geographically close to others can have a sense of, of space around them, again, to maintain safety and comfort for as many people as possible. All of our in-person services, of course, we require masks and we'll continue to do so until it is safe not to. And as I've said before, I will say again, I am counting on the good sense and the goodwill of our parishioners. I'm assuming that anybody over the age of 12 who comes to one of our worship services in person is fully vaccinated. Please, that is the right thing. Uh, if you've not been vaccinated, I urge you to do so. But certainly if you're going to come to worship with us in person, I really ask and implore that you be vaccinated so that we can, again, keep people as safe as possible. Meanwhile, in uh, another worship detail, some of you may recall that prior to the pandemic, we had a midweek Eucharist every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. It had a healing component as part of that. You didn't have to take the healing component, um, but it was offered as part of the service. Uh, and it was a, a lovely gathering during the middle of the week held in the Rock Chapel. We've not done that since the pandemic has been going. Beginning on September 15th, um, we're going to offer a six-week trial. We're going to go back to that service, Wednesday, 10 a.m., Rock Chapel. Again, there will be a healing rite offered. You don't have to participate in that. You can just come for the Eucharist itself. And we're going to do it for six weeks to see what the response is like to see if people want to come to it and will come to it. And after six weeks, we'll assess and see whether we're gonna continue offering that service or, or discontinue it for the foreseeable future. So I just wanna give you a heads up that that will be coming. And of course, we continue to watch the news and to pay attention, especially as schools get started again and we're hearing about children being quarantined uh, in various Albemarle County public schools. Uh, it's possible the situation could change in a way that would directly impact us and particularly our nine o'clock service. I don't know. I am paying attention. And again, following what we're seeing from public health authorities, from our bishop, and just observing um, in terms of what our parishioners are feeling and thinking, um, we may have to adjust. Um, Everything I've just said is good for at least the next 24 hours, I hope. Uh, hopefully good through this Sunday, but I can't promise you anything. You know, the, the high wire act continues and the balance is a delicate one and I can't promise you that I will not fall off the wire. But I can say this, uh, we're not walking that wire without a safety net. Uh, our safety net is always the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ, poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. That love continues to surround us and enfold us every moment of every day. This is a difficult, a challenging time, but we're going to go through it. We will see each other through it. We will make it through as a parish. And it is my ongoing prayer that even as we go through all the ups and downs of COVID life, 
that we will continue as a parish community, as individuals, to grow in love and in faith through the power of God's indwelling spirit, which is the spirit of Christ. I remind you of that love and that spirit with me, with you, with all of us, all the time. May that love and that spirit be very present to you today and throughout this coming week. God loves you. I love you. Peace.